not befitting, like the Bible itself says, like in one, um, in, in one Kings chapter eight, verse twenty-seven, that the heavens and the earth cannot contain God, much less the temple, and we are even um, smaller than a temple. So, definitively speaking, for example, it's not God's majesty that He comes as a man. We read in Hosea eleven nine and in Numbers twenty-three nineteen that God is not a man. Jesus Himself refers to Himself as a man who was sent by God. Which is what we say about him. So, <coughs> like in Mark 6 4, Matthew 21 11, John 17 3, uh, Luke 7 16, he claims to be a prophet of God. And, and the most tragic thing of this, the man himself never claimed to be God in the New Testament. This is the most bewildering thing, which is a source of so much um, incomprehensibility. So, whichever verse is Christian, we, and, I, and I can see your. Um, um, looking into the distance, hoping to recollect a verse which may have suggested that, but oh, you can't no, find no, one. No, no, oh. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. But I also. I mean, there's, there's this. I'm not ar ar arguing with you. No, no, of course. No, that's fine. But, 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 but I guess Christians. I'm not saying that they're right at all. Yeah. And that's the reason why I love them. Yeah. Um, but I do believe in God. Not, not, you believe not, in sorry, what? I do believe in God, but not, not in the institution, but, but I believe in God. Um, okay. But I also... You're a half Muslim already. Okay, what's, the next, what's the next bit? <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, but that's the definition. Islam literally means you believe in one God who is beyond the creation, who created everything. And so, therefore, by definition, by definition, he has to be beyond the universe, and he cannot be contained within the universe. Yes, but I also know that thing that the, the model of what Christian belief is is, is is God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus being the Holy Trinity is, is based very much on the on how on how Greeks. Shall I tell you who? Should I tell you actually where this came from? There are a lot of misconceptions. So it was actually brought on forward by, by Greek, by a particular uh, chap called Plotinus. Right, he was a Greek. He was a concept. Greek philosopher, mythologist, who believed in three things. He believed in, in the Almighty God. He believed in the universe and the intellect, or the mind of God. Oh, and hence, he compart he was a contemporary yes. to. The, the prior to the time of the Council of Nicaea, yes. where Christ was declared God of very God in the year 325 AD. He lived within that time frame, or slightly before that time frame. So conceptually, the Greeks, who were the ones who manifested the New Testament, took his understanding and incorporated the Trinity as an, an analogy. So the, the yes. chapter is Plotinus, you can read up about him. He was the forefather of the, um, the Trinity as espoused. Yes in mainstream Christian theology, yeah. which only really developed even even after that time in the final form in the year 451 AD in the Council of Chalcedon. Did you know in that first Council of Nicaea that Holy Spirit was not even mentioned as part of the triune formula? Ah. It only became first understood in the year 381 in the Council of Constantinople. It was further examined in the Council of Hippo in 391 or the Council of Synod sometimes referred to. And then it was ratified as a belief that God is free in one in the Council of Chalcedon in 451 AD. Wow, this so it took a massive evolutionary process. Yes. That's the exact way it happened. And even those first councils that took place, there were divergent, there were divergent opinions. There was a guy called Athanasius yes. who, who proposed this notion of free in one based upon the contextualization of uh, Plotinus. And there was another guy called Arius who was what you call deemed as a, um, uh, as a latent, deemed as a heretic. Although, what happened that, I, mean, I don't want to go into a long preamble because you probably might not be interested, but it was, um, it was well, something, uh, I'll, I'll just try to read a little bit. So it was something incorporated um, into the Christian doctrine by force by a chap called the one who presided over the council, uh, Emperor Constantine. Oh yes, I've heard of it, yes. Excellent. He, what he did, because what he wanted, because it's the Emperor of what? Of Rome. Rome, I thought yeah, so, yes. yeah. So what he did essentially was he want, he later converted to Christianity. He wanted to bring all the divergent Christian factions together 
in understanding who is this Jesus. Because the early communities of Christian, Christian belief differed vastly as to who he was. Vast difference. Some believe he was just a prophet, others believe he was like a ghost who comes in the form of man. There were so many weird and odd beliefs. So, what he, what he wanted to bring them together, so there was a there was a standoff between Athanasius, who believed in the triune formula as a bit espoused by this chap Plotinus, and there was Arius, who believed that Jesus was like a secondary God. He was not eternal. He did not exist etern eternally, but he was made into by God as a secondary God. Through, okay, okay. Through, whom, through whom God makes the universe. Not that Jesus is a participant, but rather he make, he is the conduit from whom from whom God makes the universe. So this was a debate which furiously ensued. Athanasius was a bit of a gangster. He got rid of the bishops that were going to vote for Arius and put in 297 bishops who were of his particular belief and they were of what you call uh, arm twisted into uh, voting for three abstained from that vote and it was then ratified that Jesus is God of very God. That Precisely. But Islam comes several centuries later. The same creator who espouses the worship of one God alone. God who is unlike his creation. God sends prophets which you will be familiar with. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. And we say that as a mark of respect. So, by proxy, these were all people who worship God and God alone singularly. Jesus made the same claim in John 17.3. For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God and whom you have sent, the Apostelos, the messenger Jesus Christ. Which is what Islam tells us about him. John 17, 3. Mark 10, 17. A rich young man comes to Jesus and says to him, Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says to him, Why do you call me good? There's no one good except for only God alone. Oh, I understand. Okay. I would hence invite you to maybe take a Quran free of charge. Give I, you I'm, I'm, I'm good for now. I, I think I'll just go through this for now. Good man. Have a good week. Sorry, Pocket is sticking your... He's already said he doesn't want it, so yeah, we, have okay. be, we have to be... So yeah. okay. So, um, that's fine. So, think about what I've said. We're here every Saturday, 2 to 8. If you're local, please do come by again. Thank you. Right. Thanks Thanks for that. Did I like speaking to you? Like Thank this. you. Okay, take care. Yeah. Okay, take care. So, a nice conversation, brief and to the point, uh, with our... Um, with our friend who was an ex-Christian, may Allah guide him and make him reflect. Uh, Salaam alaikum. He's, uh, he's unsure what he believes in God, but inshallah, may he read that. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. How was your Eid? Alhamdulillah. It's a bit quiet, but it was good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you.